and there we go welcome aboard everybody my name is dubious uh this is an interview series i call fly in formation and um what i'm doing with this is talking to artists from across the country people who i play their music on after the smoke is clear that's my mix show uh over there on mixcloud.com slash dubious you can find weekly independent uh hip hop mixes where we're playing just just new release music so i try to stay as tapped in with all the scenes across the country as possible and i found the best way to do that is by asking the artists who make those scenes up to kind of tell me a little bit more about their scene uh today i'm here with ben ugly dude from calgary and uh mc I, are you a producer who's making all these beats for you man I, I got a couple gentlemen that I work with here in the city, as well as uh, a couple guys that I met on the internet. Okay. Um, but just like a lot of artists, I got caught up in the uh, the whole Beat Stars thing. Okay. Nice. Know? Yeah. Beat Stars uh, is a great way to find you know new stuff to work with. Anyway, find yeah, the sound. Yeah. Very. Uh, very. Uh, yeah. Very easy to get your hands on uh, some really nice clean beats. Uh, but uh, of course, with that, uh, I ran into tons of trouble. But um, that's a whole nother story. Yeah, man. So, <laughs> dude, I've been uh, I've been playing music that you've. I think you sent me a bunch of tracks, like even a couple years ago, maybe or something. Um, but yeah, I, would been, have been a couple years ago. Yeah, I've been following along for a while now and playing music on after the smoke is clear. Um, and and like you know, I'm always. I, I got roots in Edmonton, so I'm always looking to learn more about the Calgary scene, and I've been getting more and more, um, you know, uh, filled in with with what's going on in Calgary and and um, yeah. involved. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly, man. So um, I was looking at your your Spotify discography today, and like I know all the singles. I played most of those singles as they came out, but it's been like a yeah. year since we've seen any any new music from you, dude. So like. Uh, I know when we set this up, you told me you had like 200 tracks in the vault or some fucking ridiculous thing. Um, yeah. When are we yeah, getting new uh, music, man? What's what's the plan looking like? Uh, very soon. So like very soon, it's it's right around the corner. I'm just starting to uh, button everything up now. Uh, it was it was it was a long journey, but what had happened was so yeah, those two three I think it was coming up three years ago now uh, when I first started to release. Um, I don't think I was expecting the reaction. I don't think I was expecting uh, anything at all, right? So when I did gain some support from the people around me, and, uh, you know, I, <clears throat> I guess I felt accepted in ways that uh, I didn't expect to be when I put the music out. So I was like, okay, well, shit, um, I should probably hunker down and actually learn how to record a record, you know, actually start getting more involved with the, the mixing and all that and, and learn um, the kind of sound that I really want to achieve, right? Um, so it was just like, oh, fuck. I, I, I just locked myself in the studio for the last two years and uh, created a ton of music, um, all while having one goal, which was just locating my sound, like finding what that was. You know, I, I didn't want to be known as a guy who just... Uh, makes fight music and yells at the mic all the time kind of thing. I really wanted to... Yeah, you got you a know. lot of hype, uh, a lot of energy in your music, man, for sure. it's, it's A lot of it's definitely fight music, the stuff you've put out. Um, Absolutely. Have, yeah. Are you kind of going to switch gears a little bit? You're going to show a little uh, bit more uh, stylistic differences? I am, yeah. yeah absolutely. So, uh, like, immediately... Um, I started getting into even indie rock a little bit and stuff like that uh, right after my first couple projects. Um, so I've explored a few avenues now. I'm still probably always going to stick to my roots, which is, you know, like that fight music, that hype, the aggression, you know, like. Yeah, when you say you got yeah. into indie rock, I was thinking to myself, like, I don't see this guy making the sad boy auto tune crooning over 808s. <laughs> that some guys kind of yeah. are doing these days or whatever. I, I don't no think that way. that'll be yeah. what's up next. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, that, that you'll never see that. You'll never see the whole auto tune thing or anything. And like, no disrespect to anybody that does it, but uh, just not for me, you know, like, yeah, I, no, I, I, 
I agree, man. That music has a lane. You know, there's a time and place for for everybody's music. If they find fans doing that, all the power to them, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah. But, yeah, Yeah. dude. So what can we expect then more stylistically, Uh, like? um, So, so yeah, like, to to kind of continue on with what you're saying, um, took the time in the studio, and I'd say, like, what you can expect. I mean, it's hard for me to describe, right? It's always... Uh, it's hard to describe a vibe kind of thing. You just know it when you see it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, lots of piano, you know, lots of piano, lots of guitar. Um, just lots more uh, instruments, like actual instruments, right? Not just a beat pad and drum machine and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, actual, uh, yeah, live instruments. So do you play stuff well. yourself or have you been getting musicians in to, to help out with some of the sample making and stuff? Or what's That's the process right. yeah. like? So, yeah. Yeah, so like a couple of the guys that I cook beats with already, like they have uh, gentlemen that come to the studio and they, yeah, they lay down stuff, you know, whether it's drum, guitar, stuff like that. Um, so I've been getting involved uh, a lot more, or I don't know, want to say, yeah, like a lot more involved with uh, producers in the sense of um, instead of just, you know, paying for contracts on beat stars, I'm actually working with these guys. Uh, you know, kind of one on one, but not not really. Like they just they just kind of figure me out a bit, and then they go from there, right? Make me a few packs, and you know, a few bad ugly packs. Here you go, and so it, it's it's you're gonna see some interesting shit. It's it's funny because I think the best song I've ever created yet was done with the ukulele. <laughs> nice, know? yeah. Right. Like, Actually, I got a track with a ukulele on it that's dropping on Friday, man. Yeah. So. It, it, oh, let's go. I can, let's go. Okay. I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, it's yeah, total campfire banger, and never thought that would be a thing. But again, it's because I took the time the last two years to try to figure this shit out, right? For real, man. Yeah. So, a lot of your tracks, you're talking about like, you know, how the the crew has assembled, and you're you're shouting out your your crew and and talking about how you put the family together, and and there's a lot of talk about like the squad or whatever, but. I'm looking at the track list and I'm like, okay, so I see young Poppy Benito featured on this track. And I was actually surprised when I, when I saw that today, cause I had somehow missed that release, but, uh, yeah, it, it made me wonder like, who's the team? Like who, who, who's the home camp? Who's the home camp? So, uh, starting off, uh, my main boy, like state of eight, uh, he's the guy behind the lens with the photos. He's been there right from the beginning. Uh, like, even before I took a crack at the music stuff, this guy was like in my corner telling me, do something, you know what I mean? You gotta do something, right? So that's where it started. And then um, now like working with uh, Chris Serafin, he's, uh, he's mixed and mixed a lot of my music and he's also recorded a few songs with me. Yeah, um, I actually interviewed kinda... Serafin as he was floating down the uh, the Bow River in Calgary a couple of years ago. Uh, he no shit. For one of okay. His. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm familiar but, with Seraphin uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Seraphin's a stud, man. He, uh, you know, he did something that I don't know who really could do that because I'm, I got a lot of attitude, a bit of a wild card, you know, and, and, um, but he like took me from knowing nothing and, and turned me into an artist. So, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting, the dynamic with Chris there. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, State of Eight, Chris Serfin, and then the two guys that I'm actually starting a group with, we're putting all our music together, Barry Daniels and Collateral. Nice. Which uh, They just dropped the track really recently yeah. here, uh, Opinions or whatever, right? That's right, yes. Yeah, I so, got that uh, one sent over. Uh, I like that track. Nice. Yeah, man. So Collateral and Barry... Um, very much just their ideologies, uh, you know, moral compass, more or less, uh, you know, it, it, we all, we all align outside of the music. So then when the music came together, it was just like, oh shit. Okay. Um, so those are the two guys that I'm cooking up with, uh, an awful lot right now. Um, nice. Yeah. Like, uh, and then I got mysterious, uh, mysterious visions. Uh, doing all the videos for my rollout for the last two years. So him and I have been filming for the last two years for a lot of these unreleased tracks. And uh, beautiful, man. It's good to actually have like a photographer and a videographer both on team like that. I think that's, uh, you know, that that helps helps you get 
out to the masses a little bit more easily if you have polished visuals. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Couldn't do it without them. Those are, those are my dogs. And the one thing about those two is, I always say this, is I can, I can just uh, say, a, say an idea, you know, for just and they just take it from my lips and they make it a, a real life. You know, they turn it into, uh, they bring it to life. You know what I mean? And that, uh, that was super important, but also very rare for me because uh, sometimes I feel like it's hard to take your vision in your mind and lay it down on a piece of paper for somebody to read, right? So yeah, yeah, these guys do a good job at that. And, uh, Weird, man. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, been a beautiful journey. So um, so far, it's just been a string of singles. Have you ever put an album together? Yes. Uh, so I did have the beginning, which was a six track EP. And now I have created uh, a series for that EP, almost like an episodic series where there's given, where I have now multiple uh, albums in, in series. So there's the beginning and there's few and far between, which we'll be releasing this year. I haven't announced that yet. Um, and uh, well, you just did, man. You just did. I'm cutting yeah. the clip. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Shut her down. Yeah. Um, so. Fucking, yeah, so I have those EPs, so they're just short albums, you know what I mean? Six, seven tracks kind of thing. And then um, I have a, like a, sta a standalone album, uh, like my own, you know, Ben Ugly, where like even, you know, the beats behind them, like, all are, you know, fully owned by me, right? I'm not going to be in any contracts or anything like that. Nice. Uh, it's it's going to be like a foolproof album you know and uh is it mostly local producers is that how you've arranged that or just kind of uh by developing relationships with kind of online producers who you've met over the years you know it's it's hard to say actually because i have now created so many tracks for this like project in particular that i i don't know if the project's now going to consist of uh, outside producers that I know and connect with, or if it's going to consist of a lot of the local producers that I've connected and cooked with in the city, right? Okay, um, so you haven't chosen the tracks that'll be on this album just yet? I haven't, I haven't got there yet. No, okay. yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, like I have, it's all, the, it's, the whole package is there. Uh, I just need to kind of finalize the exact theme I want to take that album, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Figure out which and songs then, uh, to put on it and which ones to to leave off, eh? Exactly, yeah. Because it's going to be a twenty track al album, all in. Um, but I'm also going to do other fun stuff, like you know, put put some interludes in there and stuff like that. Yeah, right? man, twenty uh, tracks is a lot. I haven't seen you know twenty twenty track album from from a lot of artists for a long time. I feel like a lot of people hit like twelve or thirteen and kind of yeah. uh, call it quits around there, you know. Yeah, well, they, they almost push that on us now, too, uh, artists, uh, music creators, anybody really. Yeah. Uh, I always hear that is you need to create stuff that's short term, right? People have this short attention span. The goldfish memory. Yeah. yeah, right. Like you have three seconds <laughs> to, you know, gain their, uh, you know, attention, right? Um, but uh, I don't know. Like I, I do believe in, I do believe in all that. But at the same time, I'm like, still the greatest albums ever to, to be released are the ones that have longevity to them. They have 20 tracks on there. They have weird little skits or interludes or stuff like that in between. Yeah. Things that to, to bring that in whatever they're trying, story they're trying to tell to life. Right? I mean, I'll agree that there are a lot of good 20 track albums out there, but there's also yes. a lot of bloated albums that probably could have chopped five of the songs off of there. And you know, Illmatic had what eleven or twelve tracks on it. So, like, yeah, you can sure. go either way, really. I think I think there's there's power in either. It's really just artistic decision or whatever. Um, but if you've got yeah. two hundred songs, you can probably take one tenth of them and <laughs> well, <laughs> put I, out I a think, twenty yeah, track album. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's just more like a personal opinion. Yeah. Um, just in the sense that the albums that I've fallen in love with. Uh, were the ones that yeah they were they were long right they're long albums um, you know I, I truth be told I think J Cole's uh, Four Sills Drive 2014 yeah I think that album was 
one of the shorter albums that are in like my favorite box. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think there's 14 or 15 tracks. So it's really not even that short, but I always think that I'm like, fuck man, I wish there was just another five tracks on here, you know? How about song length? How, are you you in the camp where it should be two and a half minutes and beyond that you're going to lose people's attention? Or, I mean, I feel uh, like you're, you know, young enough that that might be the mentality of a lot of your peers anyway. I struggle with that too because a lot of my songs are long. <clears throat> Take, for example, um, you have to forgive me. The voice is a little raspy. I'm just kind of getting over a head cold here, but... Oh, it's all good. Um, what the heck was I going to say? um song length struggling with yeah no i was just thinking so the the video so like some of my videos like my favorite one or one that i consider like my baby the masterpiece uh seven minutes and 12 seconds kind of thing something like that right so yeah fuck the trends then (laughs) yeah right fuck the trends man i don't know like i just think um I guess I'm just trying, for me, like, personally, it's like, dude, if you've got a story to tell, fucking tell it, you know, yeah. like, like, and if it's a little lengthy, that's okay, because if it's worth watching or if it's worth listening to, it don't matter, you Actually, know, people. You know, man, what you, what you just said about story kind of made me think, like, listening to your stuff, you got a lot of references to, like, like there's a lot of fingers up at the haters. There's a lot of like they said I'd never be able to do this shit, you know, and now I'm doing it. Um and 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 you're right. Like you, 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 the songs sound good, you know, the the production quality on them, even the ones from 2 years ago that you're saying you've leveled up since. I was listening oh, yeah. to thinking like this is all really polished music. It it sounds good, you know. Um I just wanted to ask about like kind of what adversity did you face? that you're you're rapping about because you never get too specific with like you know how 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 tough you had it or how how many haters there are do you have a lot of haters are there a lot of people in calgary telling you not to fucking pick up the mic or what that that's not even no it was never like it was never about the the rap shit the haters weren't even about the rap shit man i just found that like it was like hard for people to accept me you know what i mean like Everywhere I went. So I moved around a lot. I went to a lot of different schools. And I found that no matter how much time I spent there, I always felt like I never belonged. And that could be a personal thing or whatever. But I think that'll happen just, just like, moving around from school to school. Was it city to city too? Or have you yes, always been yeah. in Calgary? Yeah, province to province, city to city. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where and are you from originally, man? Can I? Calgary. I was born in Calgary. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Calgary's always been the closest thing to home for me. Next to that would be the Okanagan. Okay. Uh, that's, yeah, that's where like, I grew up. Uh, like my teenage years and stuff. Um, but it was just like, I don't know, like, I guess without getting like too personal, I just came, I was born into like a lot of dysfunction, right? A lot of, a lot of fucking chaos, like craziness. Um, you know, like, uh, nobody was a saint kind of around me and then <laughs> yeah. just trickled off from there. Right. It just, uh, I just, I had a love for being around shitheads, man. And, and, you know, so you get, you get in trouble, you do stuff, but kind of back to what I was saying, it was like, at the end of the day, I just, it was weird, dude. Like, I, I can't even explain it. Like, it was like, people just, like, if, if like, if a room of, if I walked into a room with 10 people and nine of them, like, like if nine of them might like me, but like one of them, guaranteed, I'll put every dollar in my bank account, one of them will hate me or, or dislike me or want to, take up something with me. Right. And, and I just could never figure that out. Like why, you know, why, like, I think it's Alberta, bro. Cause uh, like for for me, you know, I, I half named myself dubious because like people were so skeptical when, you know, I would walk up and tell them I'm, I'm an MC like, Oh, Oh, you rap. Do you like people are very skeptical of that right from the jump. Um, and I I feel like Alberta is kind of like, It's like the land before time, man. Like people still, I mean, less so nowadays maybe, but like when I was really growing up or whatever, people didn't think you were supposed to be a white guy rapping. Like Eminem was out there, 
but like yeah there was a lot of hate just like what who do you think you are trying to be a rapper like oh you're a gangster or whatever like and it's like well no but <laughs> you know we can still fight if you want to <laughs> yeah right yeah i just want i swear dude that's fucking crazy i swear i have a line almost identical to what you just said in one of my new songs coming out um yeah it's like yeah say what you want i'll still fight you you know what i mean that's so funny um but uh you know what dude a lot of the disrespect and the scrutiny and the ridicule and the fucking you know all the shit i took came before the rap yeah like truth be truth be told it was like it was the music and the rapping that made me want to or sorry it was uh, the disrespect and all that that made me want to do the music and the rap um because i didn't start writing until i was like 17 i think and then, you know, again, like off, on, off, on, never took it seriously until I was 25. Yeah. Um, but, but uh, yeah, it was just, no, I just like, like I said, man, like, I don't know, like people just, it seemed like people like to just watch me squirm, you know what I mean? Like they, they would, you know, I was just always around somebody trying to rip the fucking rug out from under me kind of thing. And I just never figured it out. I'm like, fuck, like, why, why is this happening? And then as I got older, so, like, when I was younger, I put it off, right? I didn't really know, I didn't know, like, what it really was. And then as I got older, I started to realize, like, damn, like, fuck, like, people are really shitty. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm There's really... a lot of shitty people out there, man. Haters gonna hate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Age like... wisdom right there. <laughs> Right? Like, I got fucked over real good sometimes. And I'm thinking back, like, I'm, I'm 30 now, and I'm like, even at 30 years old, there's things I still wouldn't do, like lines I couldn't cross, even being a teenager. And, you know, people just had those, they didn't have those boundaries with me kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so it just, you know, it was like, it was a tough love crowd. And it was like, <clears throat> I remember the guys that I used to hang around used to tell me, like, we're going to break you down and build you back up again. You know what I mean? Because, you know, whatever, right? What, I don't know, whatever tough the reason. Tough love or yeah. whatever the fuck, yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing, is that shit never works when it's all tough love, and it's, it's all tough and there's no love, right? Right. Or like, we're going to break you down, but never build you back up again, you know? So, so like, I fucking do, I like, yeah. And then as I got older, I was, uh, I don't know, you know, I just... I don't know. I had all these epiphanies and realizations and, and just moments where I could really uh, compartmentalize things and put it in perspective. And um, yeah, I, then eventually I got it into writing. Right? Yeah. That was that was it. Like I just that's where the whole fuck you thing comes from because I did have a lot of people around me telling me don't don't waste your time on the music. Oh, I lost my chain. I just lost my chain. Uh, this, oh, damn. this was, this was a uh, yeah. It broke, it broke on me at, at work. I was uh, yeah. Anyways, long story. Yeah, uh, man. But, a lot uh, of normal people don't understand the music grind. You know, no, normal people who are working their nine to five, they're gonna tell you to stop making music and just pick up a nine to five, right? Like, so. yeah. Everybody, nobody was in support of it. In fact, people were kind of like pessimistic about it, which is always crazy. Because, like, I've always worked and stuff like that. It wasn't like I was just this dude sitting around just being like, ugh, like, yeah. no job, living at home with parents or <laughs> something. surfing, yeah. Yeah, trying to be a rapper, right? That, so so I still didn't understand why I didn't get any support. Um, it wasn't until I put out that Freestyle Friday. It wasn't even the, the EP, the beginning, the album. It, wasn't, it was when I put out that Freestyle Friday video. Okay. That was all of a sudden, everybody was like, okay, you know what, maybe, maybe you should give this a crack, you know? <laughs> and, and yeah, so I just, after that, it was summer jam. And then uh, Cuckoo was kind of just, honestly, like Cuckoo was kind of for fun, right? Brandon and I just first met. We wanted to put something together. I let him choose any song he wanted. He chose that one. And then I put it out. But I knew already that I was going to take this, like, two-year hiatus, right? Like, I knew I was going to just hunker down and, find out what i really want from this you know and uh i think i finally got it now what was the thinking but, behind taking the two-year hiatus just to really make sure shit was perfect before you started trying to push it because that's like the exact opposite of what they'll tell an artist to do right they, they'll tell you just 
be consistent, drop, 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 drop every two weeks, pump out content with it and fucking Absolutely. learn as you go. And I, and I agree. I completely agree, which is why I just did it a little different. So instead of trying to be in that rat race where you're constantly in the wheel, you yeah. know, every day you're just you're your content. Uh, I got to meet this guy. I got to call that guy. I got to, you know, it's, it's fucking exhausting. So I just figured that I would create the snowball effect, yeah. build this snowball up. Right. And then, then when it comes release time, now the consistency isn't so hard, right? Yeah. Because I have, all this stuff I'm sitting on, but I'm still making new stuff. But I'm never like, I don't have enough, or God forbid I ever get sick or something happens or whatever, right? Yeah. There's still this this momentum that is gonna carry on and continue, right? And that that was the true point behind it. And it, yeah, dude, I know, like listening to everybody for the last two years drive me fucking nuts. <laughs> you know, like it's like, dude, <clears throat> you it's people. Or acting, yeah, very impatient with me, which I completely understand, and it's nothing short of flattering, nothing short of flattering, I, I, you know. But at the same time, I'm like, imagine how I feel. You know, I'm seeing this stuff. I want you guys to see it. I want you guys to hear it. But I just believe that I created a formula uh, for myself, and yeah, man. I just want, I want to give it a go, give it a rinse. You know, dude. I saw like you know, there's all these online like how to market yourself as an artist people or whatever, and I follow a few of them on Instagram. And I saw one of them the other day talking about how like the way that him and his band managed to get a bunch of good gigs was by not doing any gigs for a long time. He said we just put out music and put out music and let people like the music and and just, you know, kind of had a vacuum as far as shows went. And he said more yeah. and more people started knocking on the door, you know, hitting them in their messages saying like, "Yo, you got to come do a show. Come out do this show. Why aren't you doing shows? Come do shows already." Um and you know, it, that flies in the face of the the common online wisdom that people always are telling us to post all the time and and put out all the content that we can. Um, but I kind of thought about I it. Like, and like you know, making that vacuum might work a little bit. Um, I, I I think it's wise. Um, I think it's a wise move. You know what I mean? Because in my theory or my argument behind anybody that's like, now nah, you should just be putting on stuff all the time," is well, you know what? Like, what if you make a song crack, like break the internet, right? Now you are responsible for coming up with something yeah. that's going to back that up. Yeah. You know, got to follow it. Yeah. So at least if you have this little, you know, this little, uh, I don't know, this little nest egg or whatever stuff, chances are you probably created a lot of the same music around the same time, stuff like that. You know, like, it's just going to be a lot easier to back up a move like that, right? Um, I I think the saddest thing that happens now today is watching all these TikTok artists, right? These guys that are blowing up kind of like overnight and you see their, their video or the track everywhere for all of a few weeks. Yeah. You, they you never hear about them again. And I think that's the saddest thing about it is because they are now struggling, not realizing that they had a complete hit on their hands. They're now struggling to keep that momentum going, right? And yeah, I just don't want to get caught up like that. Yeah, yeah. To have the one hit and then have nothing prepped or in the tank to to put out after it, I think that leaves artists in a real tough place. And that's why a lot of people hit like the the sophomore slump or whatever after their first album does yeah. really well, even. Um, yeah, and yeah, a lot of extra pressure is on them then because everybody's watching, right? I grew up on the late night shit, uh, Rap City and One Hit Wonders, right? Yeah. On Much Music. And that One Hit Wonders show, that 30 minute episodic series. Yeah, I remember that shit. I haven't thought about that for a long time, but I remember that now. Yeah. Hey, oh man. So fucking like, I remember growing up as a kid and just thinking, oh, I'd hate, I'd hate to be on watching myself on the show 25, <laughs> 30 years later. you like, One Hit Wonder, like, man. Come on, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude, I, I mean, just, yeah, with today's internet era, like, y y those people might have been able to come back and do something, you know, even if it was changing lanes yes. into some other 
you know, doing something different than what they were doing, uh, you know, starting a podcast or, or fucking whatever else, right? Like, there's, yeah. yeah, there's there's so many lanes on the internet available to people now that, um, yeah, it's totally a different world than then, but it is still something you want to worry about, uh, not being able to follow up with a success or whatever. Um, speaking of different lanes on the internet, though, I noticed just like. 15 minutes before this thing, I was looking at your IG account and you also had a link to like, I think it's like ugly gamer or something along those lines. But, but I like <laughs> yeah. clicked the link tree and you're not on Twitch. Where the fuck are you streaming games? Are you streaming to YouTube? That's right. So no, I actually, I never got into the streaming thing. Um, I used to play competitively when I was a teenager, but um, I never have done, I, I haven't done the streaming thing yet. Uh, so wait, you have a so what, you have a gaming account on IG, but you don't have a stream where you game anywhere? What the fuck are we so, talking about, bro? <laughs> In-game captures. In-game captures. So I just take uh, what I would consider great photographs in okay. video games. Or uh, just, you know, I haven't posted any yet. But So here's the thing, dude. I have... <laughs> I have a folder of like 14,000 uh, edited photos from gaming in the last couple of years that I have to start posting. I have like hours of footage that I want to start posting. And it's not even, yeah, it's not even to uh, tie it into my music, so to speak. I, I think it will help. But I, because I, for my music, I want to target the gamer's demographic. Yeah. Um, me being a gamer myself, I figure... You know, how can I contribute even though I'm not streaming all the time? I'm like, well, when I do play, I do snap some pretty banger photographs, right? So that's what Ugly Gamer is all about, more or less, is the quality behind gaming. Was it Cyberpunk you know I mean? 4040 that made you, whatever that Cyberpunk game was called? Uh, that 2077? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, yeah, I knew 4040 wasn't the right numbers as soon as I said it. But Cyberpunk, anyways, I remember when that game dropped, like, there was a bunch of people showing off their really pretty photos of that game because it was so fucking nice. Yeah, yeah. So I was already doing it for, I don't know, a couple of years. Uh, but it was Cyberpunk 2077 that made me take it seriously. Yeah, right. and uh, yeah, so I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna just start another Instagram. Haven't posted there for a long time. Again, saving up a buttload of stuff for that too. But uh, yeah, I'm just a passionate gamer, man. I love uh, it's the only thing that shuts my head off. I love like yeah. big open world RPGs. Not even like a huge online guy, right? Um, I just love it. I love it. Can't get enough of it. Uh, try to squeeze an hour in every day. Yeah, man. You, know, you should set up the stream. I, I think uh, even if it was completely separate from your music or whatever, you might find an audience over there. Like, I can't wrap my mind around the difference between the streamers who blow up and the streamers who don't. Uh, you know, some of the time it seems like, why, why this guy? He's just playing games and sitting talking shit like anybody else does, but he's got a million fucking followers. Like... Um, yeah yeah so you, yeah you never know man that's that's a, a grind in its own right um i wanted to uh, unless you have more to say about this man i was gonna go on to something else but yeah oh no i was just gonna say i thought a lot i thought lots about it and uh the day will come it will come you Good, know man. yeah in due time yeah i'm just yeah i just i want to get this i'm also i'm writing two books right now too so i'm trying to Trying to get the wheels going all around so that when I finally do start to watch this shit, it, it like comes around full circle. You know what I mean? What kind of books are you writing? Uh, so fictional novel was that I've been, I've been jumbled up in ideas for 10 years and finally just started writing them uh, down a year and a half ago, I think. Okay. You know, just started writing the book recently. Nice, then. man. Okay, but fiction uh, stuff. I was I was thinking maybe like an autobiography or some shit too. Okay. No, no fiction. Yeah, lots of creativity. Nice. Man. Uh, just lots of uh, I don't know, just based on personal experiences and you know uh, the books and games and stuff like that I've played and read you know over the years, right? So oh, man, I don't think anybody writing books is doing it from any position other than that, right? Like it's all based yeah. on experiences. There, there's always going to be chunks of themselves written into characters or chunks of people they know, or, you know, situations they've been through or whatever written into their books, I think. 
Um, 100%. And then the, uh, the other one's a children's book. Okay. Children's book. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a hustle. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I hear people uh, make money doing that there or whatever, right? The kids' books, man. I'm always yeah, trying to convince it's... my wife she should be a child entertainer. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So, the, you know, it's weird. It's kind of a, it was an idea that came uh, a few years ago and I sat on it for a bit. Um, but I think I got a really good hook with it. Um, and, uh, you know, like, truth be told, man, like, I think indirectly it's going to relate the most to kids that grew up without father figures. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So I think, uh, I think it's got a good hook. I think it's, um, there's a market yeah, for that, man. There's a lot of those kids out there. Yeah. hundred percent. Yes. So the big, the biggest struggle for me was honestly just the verbiage. It was like, I had to remember that, you know, the reader is, is young and, not experienced and you know doesn't know uh, like a lot of words per se right so to still have the same meaning and uh the same oomph in the pit of your stomach kind of thing it was hard to to for lack of a better term uh to dumb it down right to really do you ever try uh, to do that as a lyricist with with your music try to dumb I, it down for the audience because i feel like um, the general population is I mean, I, I hate to sound pessimistic, but getting dumber and dumber and, and you know, uh, big words are losing a lot of people, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's true. Back to back to what we were talking about earlier, the whole attention span thing, right? Like, yeah. People are just a lot less um, incentivized to learn anymore, right? Nobody gives a shit, you know? They just... Hey, I can do it. Come on. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. So... Um, Ah, fucking, sorry, what was your question again? I just asked if you dumbed down the lyrics ever, if you ever consciously, right. like... So I, I've it, tried that. Yeah. It doesn't work well. Yeah. It doesn't work well. Fair enough, man, fair enough. I yeah. I don't recommend that to, to lyricists. I think, you know, being an MC is about being lyrical. If we're not going to be lyrical to a high level, what the fuck are we doing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, 100%. But, 100%. Yeah, man. Uh so dude from looking at your social media over the past few years i've gathered like you know that you work a blue collar job and um that you know you're not ashamed to show it right like i feel like a lot of mcs across the country canada specifically and probably into the states i don't pay nearly as much attention to american rap as i used to these days but tapping into the indie market of hip-hop across canada i think a lot of guys are working blue collar jobs and they do the hip hop as a side thing and pay the bills 100%. with their blue collar job. And, you know, I've, yeah. I've done that for a long time myself too. Um, and that was always my mentality. It was just like, you know, especially here in Alberta, it's easy enough to pick up a shovel and go get a job making decent money somewhere, put on some boots and, and find a gig out there. And that's a, a good way to pay and have enough extra income to be able to buy some music gear and, you know, get into a studio, yeah. do, do all that stuff. Um, but I find that a lot of the MCs who are living that lifestyle don't talk about it in their music ever. Right. Like they'd, they'd rather talk about anything than what they do for their day to day living uh, in their music. Yeah. And, and they're not showing it on social media or whatever, but like I've yeah. seen you in your work vest on fucking work sites. Um, uh, you told me today you were knee deep in concrete. So I gather you are a concrete worker or whatever, putting in, putting in concrete, but no, like, I'm actually not. I was, uh, no, I was just there to supervise today Oh, okay. and, uh, just seen an opportunity to get involved. Uh, cause I, I, yeah, I can't stand around for very long. So, uh, yeah, just uh, went to town doing some concrete today. But no, I actually, uh, I'm, I'm a site super for uh, exterior siding and cladding uh, company here in the city. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of a flex guy. I, I do all kinds of stuff. But uh, so background, uh, went to school for electrical, uh, plumbing, uh, eventually got into auto body somehow. Uh, and then now I'm in the exterior siding. So all right, jack of all yeah. trades a little bit then. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Right. Almost um, all the trades anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. Even did, did the butcher thing. Fuck, I've done all kinds of shit, man. Um, but uh, so but I do you really enjoy. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, man. I wanted to ask, though, like uh, 
is it something you'll talk about in music? Like, it will there be, because in the last year, I've talked to two different guys, uh, Arlo Maverick up in Edmonton and Fortunato from Toronto. And both those guys released projects called Blue Collar. Um, oh, yeah. And we kind of talked about, like, maybe this is the era when hip hop is ready to hear people talk about, like, a little bit more down to earth kind of day to day reality that we're all living through in the music a little bit more. What do you think about that, man? Truth is ugly, baby. Fuck it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, like that, that's what I'm all about. Um, real shit, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like live your truth, be yourself. Yeah. So the blue collar stuff, if you know this, it's weird that you actually said that because I never flew into that, that you're right. Like there aren't a lot of dudes that ever talk about that in the music ever. No, you know, and, never hear them say what they do for for work. No. I listen to six hours of new rap from across Canada every week, and nobody's talking about like how they pay the bills. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> you right? know, like, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure about self titled, but like apathy self titled and demigods. I know apathy. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he's a mason, right? Like yeah. he's uh, a yeah, yeah, I think he's, he's something full. blue collar, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, like full blown trades guy, right? But again, listening to their music, you never really know that. So, um, yeah, wild. Uh, well, fun fact though, I'm actually so I did a lot of demo work too, and uh, I'm I'm yeah gonna be shooting a music video in some construction gear, <laughs> throwing around nice. throwing around the sledgehammer, you know, doing some cool shit, right? Um, getting some Tonka to- toys out there um yeah that's actually happening this summer so i do have some things to contribute but you know what it's funny my actually my incentive it was never the whole blue collar lifestyle uh because i mean i respect that regardless but it's actually the alberta lifestyle you know that was because like again mentioning what we were talking about earlier you quite often you tell people you're an artist and you rap or you know this is what you do and they're they're right away um what's the word i'm looking for shouldn't have got so cooked um <laughs> not resentful but uh almost what's that? yeah <laughs> yeah right? jealousy they, shines through sometimes that you know they wouldn't admit it that really, way but yeah yeah reluctant they're very reluctant to take you seriously and you know, so I caught on to that right away, which is actually like in conversation, uh, you know, guilt free, I'll fucking, you know, go promote Ben Ugly on the streets or whatever, I'd shows, whatever, like, you know, check me out, like whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. But in just basic conversation, I never really tell people that I do the music thing or anything because immediately they stop taking me seriously. It's fucking weird. Like you can almost see it in their eyes. Yeah. But I found when they discover it on their own, all of a sudden they're like, okay, okay, you're cool. I'll listen to this. You know what I mean? I can rock with this, right? It's fucking weird. It's, yeah. it's like a psychology Dude, it's thing, Cause right? so often the amateur rapper in like, you know, the comedy sitcom, uh, I'm thinking of that one about like the people working at Walmart. I think it's called like Superstore or some fucking thing like that. But yeah, yeah. there's that amateur rapper and like, he's just a complete joke. Right. And I feel like that yeah. has tainted everybody's view on like, oh, you're a rapper. Whereas like, if you like, for a while, I just told people I was a lyricist, you know, because it, yeah. it sounded better somehow to the people of Alberta or yeah. to people who aren't involved in hip hop than it does to try to tell them, well, I rap, I'm an MC. Um, it's, it's it's a weird thing, man. But yeah, uh, that's why I hate joke rap. I hate motherfuckers who are out there like hobby artists just well not even hobby artists. I, I, I respect a lot of guys who are because, you know, hobby artists aren't necessarily doing it for the money they're just making the art that they want to make but i'm talking guys who like rap like i don't know like a little windex or whatever where like the joke just kind of seems like haha isn't it silly that i'm rapping like I, <laughs> i'm saying all the same stuff that like big rappers say but haha, i'm just some guy from a normal place here in Canada. Isn't it ridiculous that I would wear a chain and like be a rapper? And it, that shit is just like, bro, we don't need it. <laughs> we, you know, I, I, I liked dude's music when he was DTG better than 
as Lil Windex or whatever. Windex, but, yeah. But he's out there in the country saying, right now, right? Like so yeah. people people also love that joke rap. Um it just it doesn't do guys like you or I who are trying to make authentic art as MCs any favors at all because yeah, yeah. You, you tell somebody you're a, a rapper and they instantly think of like how cheesy it is to be a rapper in in most media that you see um yeah i feel you there uh, actually you know um so even to double back a bit yeah so sorry I, what i mean so that wasn't uh yeah see i gotta be careful with this if p- other people are gonna be watching um <laughs> yeah I, I felt that even i mean and like, whatever love to little windex like if fucking like i said earlier if people are enjoying the music all the power to you make the music go out and do it but the statement that i made that it doesn't do a lot of people any favors walking up telling people you're a rapper when 100 that's what yeah, people no, think you know well and, and i yeah so yeah i didn't mean i didn't mean to say hobby artists actually disrespect anybody who does it as a hobby what i meant is the guys that are they don't like man i treat this shit like a job you know what i mean like i i treat this like a job when i show up i'm like ready to go I'm on time i'm there i'm punctual i'll i'll work overtime i don't fuck you know like i'm just like i'm in it right yeah uh we're like a lot of guys they're super talented they're great they're great artists all that stuff but you know what i mean they're just they're just fucking lazy they're not putting in work yeah yeah they're fucking lazy man and like we all know a couple of those guys who are super dope when they're in the cypher but like yeah it's like pulling teeth to try to get them into a studio and actually like make a make a record or whatever yeah like, this is the funny thing is like, there's not a soul on this earth that knows me as it, as for any, I've, nobody's ever woken up to text from me. Like when I'm supposed to be somewhere, or when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Nobody's ever woken up to, you know, Oh, I'm not, not going to make it today. Like, you know, I'm, I'm having stomach issues. You know what I mean? Like none of that shit. Yeah. Fuck that. Like, like the only thing that will keep me from doing what I say I'm going to do is a fever. Right. You know, like flat out. If I got a fever, oh my God, I'm, see you later, right? But yeah, so I think that's what I struggle with the most is just like, I understand like we're, we're none of us are making the money we want to make from this shit. You know what I mean? I understand that, you know, it takes a lot of self drive and willpower to be consistent doing this stuff. And you know, constantly being judged or scrutinized by people you love or your family or fuck whatever it is. Yeah. It's hard. But, you know, that being said, man, you treat this shit like a nine to five every day for a couple of years. Like something's going to happen. Yeah. Right? No, nothing uh, worth doing is easy or whatever the saying is, right? Something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely not. And I've been, I've been eating shit for years to try to get to where I want to go, right? So. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, I don't know. Work. Dude, uh, this is something I ask a lot of people and get all sorts of different answers, but what does success as a musician look like to you? Oh, fuck. Like, what is the dream? <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's, what's, what's the best that could happen with music? That's a good... No, it's a really good question. Um, I could go two ways with it. Uh, so, like, in my opinion, like, true success, like, real success as a musician is having a fan base uh that like 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 you said you mentioned some of my lyrics and the things i talk about and that was like so cool because when somebody can get in deep like that with your music that's what it is you know when you're hitting people right in the chest where they're taking time out of their day to message you or to call you or whatever and be like dude you said this changed my life this way or changed my perspective this way. Yeah. Like, thanks for that. Or like, I don't know. Like that. Even if it's just, this me. bar was super witty. It's still the best thing you can tell an MC to quote an MC to that MC. Yes. That's, that's the best compliment you can give that person. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like when people, um, you know, cause essentially like Ben ugly is a character that's created. Right. I mean, yeah, it's all drawn from real experience. And, right you know, my life, but at the same time, it's like, you know, like, I was like, I look angry in all my videos. I'm not really that angry all the time. You know what I mean? It's all, so, um, fucking getting a little off topic. You got to crank the dial to 11 a little bit for 
for it to catch people's attention i feel like that's the way i've, I've always felt with music because it's got to have a little bit of an edge to it anyways to be a little yeah, bit inflammatory you, you want people to go what the fuck did this guy just say right right yeah 100 yeah so sorry what was your original question again uh i think i asked last um how like what your idea of success looks like success yeah so the other version of success though um so outside of uh you know connecting with people on a deep level because you wrote these lyrics it comes from a deep place right so yeah outside of that you know uh if you have a little operation going where you're selling merch people are buying your merch they're supporting uh whatever it is that you're selling your music your merchandise your whatever it is also that um huge because again yeah money's not everything but yeah. Um, the idea that you could have 5,000 fans and you could live pretty comfortably off your music. Oh yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's success. That is, you know, you don't need to be 16 million followers on Instagram to have success in your fucking music, you know, like and that's yeah. the truth of it. Dude, especially um, in Canada with the grant system as what it is, there are a lot of people who are a lot less successful than that and they're paying their bills off music, you know? Um, yeah, so yeah, the federal government does favors to Canadian artists for sure. <laughs> I've had the example uh, a couple of really dope people go as far as tattooing my logo on them, you know, because that's how much they believe in the movement and they haven't even seen the shit that I've been working on. So it's even that much more like, yeah, wow, like fucking crazy. But that, that right there, man, like that is like, you know, like mind blowing. But I take and it back. Quoting an MC is a pretty good compliment, but getting that MC's logo tattooed on you, that might be the greatest fucking. Yeah, that's something get, special, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And that's that to me, like I don't take that lightly, especially because I don't have any tattoos. Yeah. You know, so I'm just like, wow, like that's that's as absolutely wild to me. But it reminds me that these people are connecting uh with me on a level that um they're connecting with me on a level that I was on when I wrote that song. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if they can hit that frequency too, wow. You know, it's like, okay, I see you. Right. So, so as far as finding fans, like even before this, we had a little bit of conversation on Instagram about like, how you like to curate your Instagram feed in a certain (laughs) way or whatever. So that it's like, pictures go well beside the next one or something along those lines was what I I gathered from what you were telling me. But like, can you talk a little bit about the promotion strategy? Like, is, is that because of, do you want to promote properly or what's the thinking behind like having a curated, nice IG feed? Yeah. Okay. I won't get too crazy into it. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I always found that when I went to pages and their feed was just clean looking, it wasn't just, yeah. You know, random, like, for example, like, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. Just, you know what I mean? Just messy, messy kind of feeds, shit everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you don't random really shots from parties or whatever the fuck. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. like, what are you? Are you just like a regular dude? Or you like, do you rap? Or like, you know what I mean? So I always found when you could go to an artist page and almost immediately, obviously you got to do a little homework, but almost immediately you could identify with what they're about. So for me, yeah, I, I got a little too many fuck yous and middle fingers on my shit uh, that I actually like. But, um, you know, I just want people to see immediately that I'm just, you know, this, I don't know, like, I guess it's fucking sad to say now, but like, kind of like, I just like an old school cat, you know what I mean? Like, I just, just keep shit real, live, let live, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't yeah. fucking, I don't do none of this modern day fucking weird shit uh but um sorry i keep forgetting the what the wording of your what's your your original question i was just asking like what your promotional strategy is like how i mean online mostly right yeah so without ranting um you know i just uh fuck do you do do paid ads do you you pay for i I've done, I did do a couple of those, but they, so Summer Jam, I did a paid out on that for 20 bucks or something. Yeah. Don't really know much about it. 
Uh, I'm going to have to get into that with the length of the catalog here. But um, no, honestly, truth be told, rep- fucking like uh, reply to your DMs, like reply to your comments. Okay. Don't make people feel like you're too cool for them. You know what I mean? Like that. I always yell at man. Answer the fucking phone when it dings in your pocket. It drives me nuts when I can't get a hold of artists. It's like, I know that you got this fucking phone on you 24 seven, like answer the goddamn. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Come on now. Um, yeah. Like that. So like, I, like I'm kind of an asshole, you know what I mean? Like I'm pretty, <laughs> I fucking troll hard online and a lot of people take it very personally. A lot of people can see through my bullshit, which that's what I want. Right. Like I'm I'm just a total troll on there, but uh, my marketing strategy, truth be told um, is more or less consistency. I, I set alarms for my posts. All my posts are like, so all my posts are done months in advance hashtags, um, captions, and of course the actual content. Uh, and I just, I kind of just like put it aside and then like every week. So I haven't posted for a while, right? Cause I've been doing all this other stuff, but when I am posting, I have alarm set in every week. So it's usually like Saturday, Sunday, whatever day is more convenient for me. I'll take a f- couple of hours And I just sit down and I write out, or sorry, not write out. uh, I just make sure everything for the week is all lined up. Yeah. So that when I'm like at my day job or, you know, eating dinner, like whatever it is, press of a button, press of a button, press of a button. And, and then. So necessary. Yeah. Yes. And then, but, and then you've got to stay consistent in that and you have to figure out your times. Like, uh, like guys that are just like, Oh, I'm just going to post like whatever happens. It's like, look here, you fucking guy. We live in the North. You know what I mean? We live in Canada. First of all, the entertainment ceiling down here, yeah. the budget down here, you're never going to post locations in Canada. Actually, I shouldn't say this without a larger following. You're never going to post lo- locations. Even for example, in Canada, where other people through Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, click on that pin and then they're seeing your feed and they're going to your shit. So it, that's, it doesn't happen around here. Like the reason why you can go to, you'll see idiots with 15,000 followers on their Instagram for no reason at all. It's just a picture of them with their dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just, they're just like, what up? Fucking dirty coffee table, fucking stinky looking house. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They're like, you're like, what the heck's going on here? And it's just because they're in this like zone, this area, this demographic or geographic, whatever you want to call it. They're in this map that is like the internet's just like feeding their phone. They're kind of like tapped in with all these like different things. Right. And I, I just think that's kind of shit that dudes don't really think about. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck man, we're in Canada. We're in the North. Like our grind, truth be told, is actually 10 times fucking harder than the guy down south who can just pay $500 or $800 for a 15 minute set at a huge nightclub. So he might meet somebody who actually changes his life. Exactly. Without even like paying to open like that, they can just book nightclubs and there's so many different audiences down there. So close together. Yes. You know, say you're a boom bap act. There's just going to be millions more people across America who are interested in paying for a ticket to go out and check out some boom bap. than there are in Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, you know, like there's, 40, yeah. 50 people in each of those fucking cities who might pay for a boom bap ticket. Um, <laughs> whereas, yeah, dude. Yeah, there's millions down, down south, man. Yeah. Yeah. People, they go crazy for it. We're here. I like, I don't fucking care who you are. You could do any show anywhere in the city. You are going to see one, at least same face for real at every show. Yeah. And, and it, that just tells me that, okay, our scene, you know, great scene, great culture, relatively small, Yeah, you know? So, um, yeah, you can't argue the facts, right? It it is what it is, you know? For real, man. Um, Something I've wanted to ask a bunch of indie artists that I've talked to, and I I have kind of just forgot, but I'm going to ask you, would you ever sign to a major label? Uh, (laughs) Because personally, I feel like 
the days of doing that should be numbered. Like, fuck these major labels, man. Why are we letting the billionaires control the internet? We we can go direct to, to fans at this point. And I feel like by the time these labels swoop in to offer a deal, a yeah. lot of the time the artist is probably big enough. They don't fucking need that. But they yeah. sign their soul away into some 360 deal or whatever, right? So I first, when I first was getting into it, that was like my thing, right? Okay, I'm going to do all this work. I still had the same agenda, but I thought it was all so that one day I can get signed and, and be good, right? Right. But then I started doing all the fucking work as an independent artist and realized I can do all the work as an independent artist. And now I just have completely different views on it, you know, because I can go 20 hours a day. You know what I mean? Like, fuck it. I'll go all day long. Right. I don't have, I don't have kids. I'm not married. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm ready to go. Right. So, uh, would I sign to a major label? Ooh, buddy. It's tough to know, say until the money's on the table in front of us, but yeah. It's, it wouldn't be the money. It would be the person giving me the pen. Right. You know what I mean? It would, it would have to be like one of the, you know, OGs that I grew up on or listened to or whatever. Sure. That, then all of a sudden, right, my head would probably start to shake the other way. But... Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I saw footage from a show out in Halifax where Mercules is on stage singing with Snoop Dogg. And I was like, I mean, OK, he signed to a, a major. Uh, he's on death row now or whatever. And he's under Snoop Dogg. But like, that's pretty fucking wow. dope. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, fuck, I was just watching an old video. I So I went out with Mercules out to Edmonton, shot this video with. Uh, these guys, Blaze One and uh, Jeff English, which I don't think Jeff English is no longer a artist, but um, he was he was pretty dope back in the day. I mean, this was like ten years ago. But uh, <clears throat> fuck, I don't even know what happened to that guy. Actually, now I think about it, I haven't even said that name out loud. Shouts to so him. Hope, hopefully, he's okay wherever he's at. Man. Yeah, yeah, true that. Um, but uh, anyway, I did. I went out with these guys out to Edmonton, shot these video, this video with all of them, you know, and it's just crazy. Cause like, I remember meeting some dudes that I still slap hands with today out there or whatever. And then like, you know, now I can Google death row records and it's like, you see like Tupac and then you see like Mercules and you're, you're like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, Childhood I don't know, man. Dreams like, or whatever that can go a long so way. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, super cool, man. Like, I'm really fucking happy for that guy because, like, you know, I remember, I just remember some of the conversations we had uh, back in the day, you know, when he was 20,000 followers on Instagram and, yeah, you know, we were rapping at the, the block in Red Deer there and shit like that. And, uh, well, I wasn't. I was just kind of fucking hanging out. But uh, He um, grinded it out, man. He He put in a lot of work over the years. Um, and yeah, a lot of man. smart moves too you know he was doing like he was real smart with remixing stuff and and kind of like jumping on the hot song and getting a bunch well, of views that way and getting a bunch of attention that way he he's, he's and he realized yeah he's signing with he's signing with an american label man that's a fucking move dude like yeah you know what i mean like american money american shows nobody's big until they do a u.s tour right like like until you do a tour in the USA, you know, you haven't made it right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the way I look at that. Like all the greats, fuck man. You even look at the Beatles. You look at uh, a lot of the bands that came out from the UK there. It was once these bands did this like U S tour is when their career just. For real. You know? Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have told me that like, uh, you know, kind of the cliche, I guess is that, your home market won't accept you until the wider worldwide market, the, the American market accepts you. And then suddenly you're the hometown hero. Right. But, but until yeah. then you get hate from your hometown uh, a lot of the time anyways. Um, you, your home, your hometown won't accept or your, the city you live in won't accept you until another city does. That's what I was told in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think that's probably pretty true uh, in a lot of cases. Anyways, there's there's the odd guy whose hometown loves them for sure. But 
Uh, dude, there's a yeah. segment here, and I've kept you already over an hour here, but uh, a segment of this show that I do with, with a lot of different people has been, I ask, how important is this or how important is that? And then you can be as brief or as long-winded as you want to with your answer. I'll, I'll watch some of these on your uh, on your last episode, nice, and uh, yeah. I'm ready for it. I'm okay. ready for it. So uh, let's go. How important is getting grants? Uh, very important. Fair. Do you want me to give an explanation? I would agree. I mean, that one's pretty much common consensus, but maybe give a brief. Yeah, sure. Why? Why is that important? Yeah, it, it's it's just it's it's free money, man. You know what I mean? If you got the skills and you can pull it off, it's it's free money. You know what I mean? Take it, use it, uh, because yeah, like I'm telling you, man. Like it's hard to get that it's hard to get the funds to pay for this shit you know yeah. you gotta work hard or you gotta get grants yeah. right so touring in canada costs a fortune fucking yeah, yeah there, there's not a lot of money coming back in from doing shows or selling merch or whatever so yeah yeah so um, if you can do it do it yeah agreed man uh how important is it to be able to write a good diss track Oh fuck, dude! That's that's an awesome question. Also, I think very important. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, after the whole battle that just happened here, uh, I I added that one to the list to start asking people that. But uh, I love that. Yeah, I absolutely love that. It's a great question. Um, very very important, and not because it's important to you. Got to be good at ripping someone to shreds, but. It just showcases lyrical ability. It really does. Yeah. Well, you know? and, and everybody likes to talk about how, how hip hop is such a competitive, you know, uh, genre or culture or just sport, <laughs> you know? So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, along those same lines, how important is it that an artist writes their own bars? Oh, fuck, dude. That's, yeah, that's, that's gotta be rhetorical. I mean, for me, it is, <laughs> for me, it is, but I feel like, uh, there's some artists who might tell me that like, no, if it's about making the best product, who cares how you get there? So like, you know, it's one thing if you and the homie are writing a song together and you know, you're showing him your verse and he's like, Oh, oh he's like, you should say this. That's like one thing, right? Yeah, yeah. But having somebody like write your fucking lyrics, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy to me. I, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I personally, I couldn't even stomach it myself, um, you know, and, and I mean, if you're making money and somebody else is writing your music, dude, kudos to you, okay, you, you, you beat the game, you yeah, cracked the code. You like, won, okay. yeah, yeah, I yeah, saw somebody... You, you, I saw somebody talking about it actually the other day because that fucking reference track came out just last week or whatever. And and they were talking about how and I thought it was a really good point that like the skill of being an MC is not so much the actual delivery. We've all seen the TikTok videos of people rapping that fucking Busta Rhymes verse. And it's like yeah. some soccer mom can rap Busta Rhymes super fast verse and like, OK, but like, can she write her own fucking super fast verse and come up with her own flow to do that? Or like, is she just good at go parroting that thing? <laughs> right. And, yeah. and it lowers this. It lowers people's expectations of an MC if if you're not expected to write it. Right. Like, what the fuck are we if we're not even writing our own words or expressing our own thoughts? Like, I agreed. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you caught caught it last year. Sorry, this is completely off topic, but. I don't know if you caught it last year. I noticed in the Stampede, they were having artists run shows where they're just doing covers, not even their own songs. I didn't see that, but I, uh, I know like- You have the Cowboys tent, trim me out. Okay, when I talked to Tachichi, he was telling me about this like high school mixtape show that they did out in Halifax, just like a couple months ago now, I guess. Um, and he said it like always sold, sold out and has been like an annual thing uh, that, somebody puts on i forget who puts it on but uh and he was like stoked he was excited to be doing it and he was going to perform like a couple the one track by biggie and one i don't know jay-z song i forget exactly which songs he said he was going to do um okay but and he said it's like a bunch of artists doing cover songs like that and i mean i think like as a one night thing it's kind of maybe fun to like go see acts you know perform other people's songs but it's, it's, uh, to make it your career i think would be kind of a different thing you know um 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I never really understood that, but I just meant just watching some of the local artists not, they're performing covers, they're not even doing their own songs. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on here? Right. So, yeah, super weird. That's weird. Super weird. Yeah. Um, how important is it working with one producer to develop a sound? Oh, fuck. That's a tough one. Um, I don't think very important in the sense that it's great to have, if you can develop some sort of chemistry and shit for you and this guy you're cooking up with, like gets you, you get him and you can kind of go in there and like do shit. Yeah. Um, it's great. Honestly, it's great. But uh, you want, you always want to spin a little variety. In them. For real. You know what I mean? Someone with a different set of ears, a different set of eyes might just say one thing that you know, like is the whole pivot point in the project or whatever. Right. So yeah. I, th I think don't, don't be a whore, but uh, you know, work, work with some other people and, and, you know, kind of find out what you like to see happen inside your time of creation. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I've worked with a lot of upcoming artists who are just kind of getting their foot in the door or whatever. And and one thing that always kind of like made me laugh was when guys would say that like, no, I want to learn to make beats so that I can like develop my own sound. Uh, I was always just kind of like, I mean, I guess it, like if, if that's what you think you got to do, do that then, man, all the power to you. But that's a long road to walk. It's going to take a long time to get good at first making beats and then good at rapping on them. Like, there's a lot of producers making a lot of beats out there that you can sift through yeah. and find what you like. <laughs> Motherfuckers start that process at like eight years old, usually, right? Like, yeah, God. exactly. Yeah. If you weren't raised yeah. sitting in front of a piano, you, you, you might not have been there early enough. But yeah, man. Um, how about how important is it to open when big name rappers come through town? Uh, I don't know. Um, so that's kind of what I've been up to, uh, okay. lately. Uh, so I've been opening for a lot of the shows that ran through here, uh, this past year, great opportunities in the sense that I met a lot of really good people. Hey, 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 I see you relax, relax. I see you. Sorry. My dog's just giving me the gears right now. Oh, does he know attention? Does he need to go out or whatever? I think, I think he wants to go outside. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, uh, where the fuck was I? So these opening shows, great opportunity to meet people, great opportunity to, uh, get familiar with the business, stuff like that. Um, and it was also me like from my first performance to like now immaculate difference, you know, especially the way I feel walking up there. Holy fuck, dude. Like the first five shows I did, I wanted to throw up and pass out and like <laughs> walking up there. No, oh, it was horrible. Like, I don't think anybody noticed that, but I sure felt it, right? Had you done um, a lot of shows before that? Or was it kind of like just first shows on stage were in front of great big crowds like that? Um, I think it was just, you know, I was like, because, no, I'm really good in front of other people, actually. So I think it was the idea that I have to sell these people on what I create, right? right. Like, like, I'm not going out there with this strategy or this, you know, like playing sports or whatever. You you watch all the, you know, and the same thing with music. But it's like, you know, you go play a team, another team or whatever, like, you still... You got a coach there and stuff like that. Like this is kind of like you go from rapping inside your fucking house to you know on stage in front of all these people, and then now they gotta like you, right? Because yeah. it's, it's not just music, you know what I mean? You gotta be like, hey, what's up? This is me. You know, I hope you like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like fuck, man. So it's vulnerable for um, sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. So like I didn't, I, I didn't like I had to figure out how to talk to the crowd and shit like that. So uh, to, back to your original question though. Uh, opening for big name artists, it depends on the artist. It depends on if you're getting paid, and it depends on who the other opening acts are. For real. Yep. Personally, man. Yeah, I agree. Um, since yeah. you mentioned sports, there, how about uh, how important is staying physically fit for an artist? 
Uh, well, I don't know. I've never really been ex- like ever too out of shape per se, but I can tell you smoking cigarettes has affected my uh, ability on stage. That counts. Huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huge. So um, I think being physically fit and constantly being aware of your cardio and lung capacity and all that kind of good stuff is a must. Like it's an indefinite. Um, ex- yeah, because I know a lot of these guys aren't rehearsing before the shows because you can fucking tell. <laughs> but if you are, you know what I mean? Like you're going to notice. Like there's like, I've, I remember starting rehearsing for like my first and second show. I started running like my neighborhood because I was like, oh, fuck. like I'm going to have to go jump on a stage now. Like I better fucking, you know, I better get my lungs get up. Get some right? breath control. So, yeah. Breath control is no joke, man. Yeah. Yeah. No joke. So, you know, like however you get your cardio in, yeah, get it in. Hell yeah, get man. Get it in. Uh, how important is an artist's physical location? This is kind of the it's, big fish, small pond or small pond big fish very, type deal very important everybody everybody will tell you uh oh no you can do anything with tiktok nowadays and it's like look like, like i don't want to be a flashing pack right yeah so um i think personally fucking where you are is actually huge fucking yeah. huge hell yeah man. um where you are in the states not so much because again all of the U.S. isn't experiencing, for example, like the C-16 bill and stuff like that. Like we are in Canada, right? Like our our radio waves and our, you know, like our, our news and all that's all plugged up. It's all fucked up. Man. Like you should have seen the kind of emails I got when my promotions were getting shut down for my music videos, right? Um, because at that time it was the C-11 bill that was fucking them, right? So. Um, yeah, it's um, I don't know where you're at is a huge thing. Uh, if you're in the U.S., I think you got a good chance. Even London, man. Yeah, the U.K. They have brought their scene up so fucking like it's yeah, man. it's hitting, dude. It's hitting, and if you can yeah, make some right. noise over there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I don't know. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's a big part. And it's a shame that we got such a shitty world happening right now because it's hard for people to kind of have those experiences when they move to another country. Yeah, dude. and have you I ever know. thought about moving, like trying I, to chase I don't chase that someplace else? I don't stop thinking about it. Yeah, it's Fair all enough. I think about. Yeah, I want to <laughs> live in the desert. I want to go to the states. I want to go outside. I want to see a TV in a living room outside. You know, where there's no fucking snow. Yeah. I want to look in the rocks and see little, little lizards going scurrying across the You know what I mean? Like The yeah. places we go I'm on holiday, it. man. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah I'm going to get it. Uh, so this is another new one I've been asking the last couple of guests. How important is finding or having the right romantic partner for an artist? Very. The, it's, the, it's, it's literally it will make it or break you. It's, it's honestly... Ha <laughs> fuck. It's honestly, in my opinion, the most defining decision you can make regarding your future. Like music or not, but music indefinitely. Yeah. Yeah. Word, man. Yeah. I think it goes a long way having the right person beside you in your corner. That's that's for sure. Um <sighs> it, yeah. All yeah. these questions though, I can imagine somebody telling me both sides too you know there might be somebody who tells me like ah it doesn't matter uh like <laughs> whatever run, run through them you'll be okay just rely on yourself or whatever i i can imagine somebody has that opinion out there but uh yeah my, myself i think uh you definitely need get, somebody to lean on sometimes man i get that but uh yeah no fucking no bro like that's like in my in my opinion yeah, you better be sure, because this, uh, you know, you know, if you get a little attention or whatever, you get a good buzz going, man, you need somebody you can handle that. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, how about pressing vinyl? How important is pressing vinyl in 2024? In 2024? Not very. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, like I'm I'm gonna press vinyls as a uh what I'm gonna press vinyls as a um uh what do you call it? Like a limited edition type thing, right? Um so I'll add some vinyls for people if they want to play them, they can play them, but it's mostly gonna be something that you like put on your wall kind of thing, right? Yeah. I think that's yeah. the way it is most of the time anyways, right? Like even people yeah. who do buy vinyl are probably listening to it more often off of their phone and have that thing sitting collecting dust on a shelf or like you say, hanging on a wall or something if it's a nice piece of art. But um Do I do I think pressing vinyls is actually more important than the pressing CDs? Fucking right. Yeah. Then then a CD. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I was just just thinking about it just now. I would be more inclined to buy a vinyl than a CD nowadays. Yeah. Which is actually kind of strange. Yeah. I mean, it's the price point. That's the only thing that I think keeps artists doing the like, you'll even see artists doing tapes because everybody knows like people who are buying this shit are just buying it to support. Um, you know, they want some souvenir or whatever, and they're happy to go to the merch table and support. And that's a way that artists make money is at the merch table. And, you know, people yeah. who support the indie artists know that. So um whether it's a cd or a tape or a vinyl i think it's just different price points whereas like a cd you can sell for 15 bucks and still make a little bit you know but yeah vinyl like vinyl's so fucking expensive you know to do anything yeah. but a short limited run of vinyl you got to win the fucking lottery it costs i think like 3600 bucks for a hundred uh last time i looked so shut the front door really eh? yeah man i've looked into pressing vinyl and like unless you have a lot of cash back in you that's a big gamble or, or like unless you got the tour lined up across the country where you know you're gonna go play a bunch of venues that's that's a big gamble to hope that you're gonna make your money back after spending 3600 bucks and having a box of albums to sell you know um that's fucking steep dude yeah. i did not know it was even that expensive so the price to point sell. to sell them at a show has to be 40 50 bucks you know all day uh, yeah and, and then if you're selling them like off your band camp or whatever like off of your website maybe uh to ship them is not cheap either you know it costs another fucking 10 or 15 bucks to ship the thing even inside canada so now you're looking yeah. at charging people 75 bucks for an album and it's like Phew. maybe yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> Shipping prices for parcels and shit are fucking rampant. Right? Holy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's a that's a tricky one, man. Pressing vinyl. I, I get answers on both sides of the, the yes or no on that. But, um, shit, man. Let's uh, let's do one more of these. How important is having a manager? You ever thought about getting a manager? Um, fuck. I it's uh, it's a tough one for me to answer because I've never had a manager. Sure. But if you have the right manager, I think it could be very, very useful. Yeah. Tell you right now, I, I probably would have got a lot more sleep and been a lot less stressed out if I had been. Um, right? Yeah. So You don't have to do 20-hour days if you have somebody help it out with some of that workload. Yeah, yeah exactly, right? Um, that's just it. Fucking, uh, <laughs> you asked a question and some of your, I was hoping you were going to ask me, and it was, uh, how yeah. important is fashion? Yeah, how important is fashion, man? Sure, let's do that. And uh, my, I thought, I remember the first time I was like, oh, I hope you asked me that question. Because I've, I've always had the strange um, opinion on that. Fashion isn't important. It's the way that you rock it. That's important. It's, it's, it's when you make it your own. Where that's when it's important, right? Is it's when like you'd be like, oh, that's like that's like your style. Like example, you know, like oh, the guy's got like that, you know, that Ben Ugly style. He's got fucking straps everywhere. He looks like he's going parachute. Like you know what I mean? Like Where? when you own a style, and even if it's a t-shirt and jeans, if you fucking own it, people love it. It's it's fashion. I mean, look at Eminem, right? Prime example, muscle shirts and yeah. t-shirts, baggy cargos or baggy jeans. Sweatsuits, like, maybe. Like, for a while, he was always in a sweatsuit yeah. anywhere he went. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, not even really, yeah, like, with the do-rag and shit, you know, but, but even, like, I mean, like, 
the like till I collapse Eminem. You know what I mean? Like fucking white beater jeans. Yeah. Right. Simple. The guy killed it. Yeah. It's simple, but it was effective. It was great. Yeah, man. You know, so I mean, you, dude, you sent me a, a hell of a folder with a bunch of different shots. Uh, like you're, you're half a model already, man. Like your, your, your photographer <laughs> guy has got you. Uh, definitely kind of lined up with the image. I think going in the right direction there. Or Thanks, I mean, bro. yeah, whether that's your photographer, or whether that's your own personal uh, choosing, that's my shit. Know, but yeah, yeah, that's my shit. So the whole thing is. The whole thing behind this ugly movement, when you watch the videos, when you see the photos, nothing's ever going to be ugly about it, really. You know, just yeah. the stories, right? Just the the de some of the details and the stories, I guess, are ugly. But I just want these visuals just snap. People be like, "Damn!" You know, like, "How do you do that?" You know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, visuals go a long ways for sure. Uh, you know, I've I've heard people say you'll sell more with. Uh, selling more to people's eyes than you will to their ears as a musician, which I don't know, kind of makes me sad for the music industry, honestly, but uh, it might be true. It might be the reality at this point. Well, yeah, but the entertainment industry, I, I kind of think so, right? So. Yeah, dude. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Thanks for uh, spending so long talking with me. We've been talking for an hour and a half. Uh, it, was, it was good to, to meet you and get to chop it up here. Uh, a few more things before I let anybody go. I always ask, um, can you describe your local hip hop scene to me? Uh, describe my local hip hop scene. Uh, in one word or with uh, as many sentence. as you want, man. Yeah. As brief or as long winded as you want to be. Uh, I think like it's confused. Doesn't know what it wants to be, you know? Um, it's, uh, it's just, there, it's, it, I find it very strange. Um, it's a very crap in a bucket effect around you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think it's because we are in the North and, you know, like hype shit and cool shit that we all want to be doing, uh, you don't see as much around here, right? So, um, I don't know. I just think, I think if I could describe the scene, it's, it's confused. It's a, it's a whole ass beast, but just doesn't know quite what it wants to be, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah, without, uh, without, you know, I don't know, saying anything that might offend someone somebody or something it's just like yeah i just think uh that's why i like that question to be nice and vague and just let people if they want to give me the like oh it's real vibrant and there's lots of talent answer that's cool but it also opens the door if people want to shit all over their own community and be like everybody here fucking sucks either yeah, way fuck everybody, right? <laughs> yeah. and I, it's like don't get me wrong i got that fuck you attitude all day long but i mean yeah the regards to the you know the uh the integrity of the scene is yeah things are things are a little shaky i think um i think there's something that probably could be done to unite artists a bit more yeah. i think yeah hell yeah man. you know I mean, I'm trying my best over here. I I looked at a bunch of different scenes, you know, coming from the Edmonton scene. I had about that same thought that like, there's a lot of talent here, but like all these people don't really fuck with each other. And then when I zoomed no. back the lens, it was like, yo, okay, so there's 10 people in Edmonton who were really dope. I mean, there's probably more than that, but, and then there's 10 people in Calgary and 10 in Winnipeg and 10 in Saskatoon. And they've all got 50 people who support them but they don't know about each other. So like, yeah, how or the they already don't like each other or whatever. right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how the fuck do you link it up? I don't know. I, so far I've been, I feel like I'm getting some sort of traction, just talking to different people and uh, kind of, you know, there's, there's people we've had fucking five to 10 people in Twitch chat all night. Shouts to you guys for coming through um, who maybe have learned something new about the Calgary scene. I don't know. I hope so. Uh, or about you specifically, <laughs> but you know, maybe, maybe uh, people didn't know you before this and now they do. So. Uh, well, I always struggle with these things, right? Because I, it's like, I want to say a lot, but then I'm like, yeah, I also got to try to keep semi short, right? So um, yeah, I always struggle with this shit. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, I'm talking, I'll sit here for hours. 
Yeah, well, I mean, this isn't the CBC, man. Like, I'm here for it. Any anything you want to get <laughs> off your chest, like this isn't the the ten minute interview with the CBC where you just get to be like, eh, yeah, uh, tell me about your new album. Well, I really like it. It's fucking good. You should listen to it. Okay, thanks. We're on to the next fucking segment now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah right. That doesn't cut it, man. <laughs> I like yeah. to get into no, it a little bit more. I definitely felt like some of the questions you asked me earlier on regarding my music and direction and kind of some of the things I'm going, like I could probably go, I could talk forever about that shit, right? There's lots of stuff I could say, but yeah. Um, sure. This won't be the last time you and I have an opportunity to chat. So that's the thing, man, that, uh, you know, I'm, as I'm meeting all these different artists across the country, I'm kind of plotting. I, I might start doing like, you know, maybe we do round tables where I tap this guy, that guy, and this guy, and we get somebody from Winnipeg, somebody from Halifax, somebody from Vancouver in here, and then we chop yeah. it up about something, you know? So um, it's just building relationships, trying to network with as many different artists as I can. But um, yeah, it's it's fun, man. I'm having a good time doing it. So uh, again, thanks for uh, spending the time talking with me. Um, Fuck yeah. The other thing that I ask people to do to try to build those connections, though, is um, can you just name some other artists on the scene who people should be up on, who maybe they aren't up on, even if they're guys we mentioned before? Collateral, Barry Daniels, all day long. Uh, next, I'd have the um, Upcinema. Upsin, Upcinema. 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 God, I always struggle with this guy's name. <laughs> the homie, the homie Wyatt. Anyways, uh, he's he's uh, he's outside. I just started working with him uh, as a as a musician, as an artist, as an engineer, as a videographer. This guy's the whole the whole bag, and uh, he's uh, definitely someone to peep. Um, nice. Seraphim, Young Poppy Benito, otherwise known as Talib Son. Uh, those are also two cats in the city that <clears throat> like. Yeah, they, they. I just figured out that guy's dual name, like, I want to say, like, a month ago, something like that. Like, I had played him as both of those names on Atsik and didn't yeah. realize that that was the same dude. But, uh, yeah, shouts to him. He makes dope music. Yeah, he's he's fucking hella talented. I feel like there's some other dudes I'm, I'm not mentioning. Here. You know what? Actually, fucking, I can't remember their, their name together, but there's this. Uh, I shouldn't even bring it up because I can't even tell you his fucking name. Um, his name is Chase, but I can't. Chi, 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 like like Chi, you know? Okay. Zen. That's what he, That's what he goes by. Chi. Yeah, this fucking guy, man. This he's a kid. He's like 19, 20, 20 years old or something. And I'm telling you, this guy's voice, like, and his raps and the whole thing. I mean, him and his. The, he's he's got there's a duo group together. And uh, yeah, him and his homie are, are nuts. But this fucking this Chi guy, Chase, his name is, um, man, like this guy is like a fucking hit. This nice guy man. is like a yeah. He's like I might hit you up after this and get you to send me some of these guys ats the the ones that you're uh, struggling with the names on or whatever, just so that I can actually make sure that I find them. Because that's the other yeah. reason that I ask this is like to find who's actually dope that I should be playing every week. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's because I know we slap hands with him and shit. Like we're friends and stuff, but we just never cook music together, right? So I'm just struggling with the names right now. Yeah. I just I don't know. When sometimes when people ask me questions, I just go blank. Right? No, so. that happens, man. It's a little bit of pressure. And also, like rappers, you know, they <laughs> sometimes switch up their fucking names or introduce themselves as this, and then their Instagram handle is that, and on Spotify they're this other name. Like, it it gets it gets tough trying to track down some artists sometimes. Uh, it's it's yeah. not the most impressive thing in my book. <laughs> I like it when artists have the same handle on all the different platforms or like similar handle anyways on all the different platforms. Like 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um anyways, <laughs> uh any any plans for shows or tours that we can plug that people should be paying attention to coming up? Uh well, rumor has it I might get a slot in one of these tents here. Nice. Uh, probably back pro probably back alley where I'm assuming. Um Never got really any details on it, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Might have a opportunity to come turn the place up a bit. So hopefully if that's the case. Uh, I'd really be looking forward to that. Beautiful. Um, but I actually kind of just took pause on shows uh, for a little while while I 
uh, get all this music together and just get it out to you guys, right? Makes sense. Um, so, yeah, so this summer, uh, I will, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to be a little picky and cheesy right now. Right. So, yeah, no uh, tour, no nothing like that. Um, right now, the focus is going through the catalog, getting all this film together, music videos, tracks. Is there going to be a music video for everything you drop? Is that the plan? Fuck no way. Okay. No way. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Good so, God. No. Some it's artists try that roll out. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll cheat myself in there. No, no way. Um, no, uh, just the ones that I think are worth the story. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Do it um, for the singles as is tradition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some singles, a uh, couple of the ones that'll be on the album, stuff like that, just to promote the album. Uh, I honestly, I took a, yeah, like I filmed, yeah, fuck that, I just started again. I took a break for a little while. Um, so I think what you can expect from me is just a large showcase. Nice, man. Uh, where can yeah. people find you on social media to pay attention for, you know, possible show announcements and maybe, maybe you do get that gig at the stampede. You type Ben Ugly on anything, fucking anything, Xbox Live, PlayStation even, hey, you'll find yes. me. <laughs> like, it's the gamer yeah. tag too beautiful man yeah yeah ben ugly straight up yeah you'll find me on everything ugly has been on uh ugly has been in calgary i could just put you that <laughs> <laughs> it's all good man um last question what's uh what's the best way for people to support you or other artists that they like hmm mm, 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 mm. That's a good question, man. I don't know. I don't really have any expectations from anybody, but the best way you could do it would be to stream my music when it releases. Actually listen to this shit. Give some feedback, bad or good. You know what I mean? Like, all these people are like, eh, leave a comment, like, share. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, listen I mean, to the fucking... Leave yeah, a comment could it. be hater shit, you know. I, yeah, I was talking yeah. with somebody just a little while back about how, I think it was Kitz Willman was telling me that, like, a lot of the engagement he gets on TikTok is people hating, but, like, that yeah. boosts you in the algorithm anyways, you know. The haters think they're yeah. doing something, but really they're just getting you shown to more people, so. So what it is what it is for me is, like, if somebody, let's say, watches the music video line, right, and then he calls me out for something I did two minutes and 30 seconds in that music video, like, thanks, man. You watched the whole thing. Thanks yeah. for taking the time. You know, like, for real. It's, yeah. So, the best way is to actually, yeah, listen to the shit and have some legitimate feedback that, for me personally, that's everything. Yeah. I'll say it for you, too, because I'm always yelling it. And this is what I really hope people start doing buy fucking music. Streaming is good. Yes. Everybody wants people to listen to their music and connect. But if you like a song, it's 99 cents. It's 99 yes. cents, guys. Go buy it online. Buy it from Bandcamp. Buy it from iTunes. Buy it wherever the fuck you want to buy it. If more people did it, it would put some money in the artists that you enjoy's pockets, right? So, like, yep. help the artists. If you enjoy them making music, it's not free to make music. So, yeah, that's that's what I yell every fucking time I get the chance to. <laughs> oh, well, thank, that, that 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 being said, but big thanks to everybody still buying this shit because, yeah, I don't know. I think the beginning, like I put all this stuff out for free and they sell it for six ninety nine or yeah. whatever, right? Stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, yeah, definitely buy the music. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, music. man. All right, dude. I'll uh, I'll catch you another time. It's been good talking to you. Nice to meet you. I appreciate you doing this. It's a pleasure, brother. Of course, anytime. Um, yeah, and anytime you want me back, just let me know. I'll make it happen for sure. Sounds good, man. Peace. Bye, bye, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for hanging out. That was an extended episode. God damn, these, these episodes are coming up on two hours on a regular basis at this point. I guess I talk too much, but uh, people seem to enjoy talking about their art and everybody's got a lot of opinions and there's no right answers on any of this stuff. So 
you know, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm trying to get the consensus on all of these answers. And uh, if you, you want to see clips from various different artists answering the same questions, make sure you find me on Instagram. Uh, it's just at dubious. There's an underscore after it. But if you just search for D-O-O-B-Y-I-S, you're going to find it. Um, dubious.com is the hub for everything that I do. Coming up on Fly In Formation, uh, I am booked for every Saturday and Tuesday throughout June. So uh, this Saturday, June 8th, I'm talking to Mitchell Lawler. The Saturday ones are at 3 p.m. most of the time, and the Tuesday ones are at 7 p.m. most of the time. We're talking Mountain Standard Time. Uh, June 11th, I talked to Edmonton's K-Blitz. Uh, June 15th, I talked to Big Tones. He's based out in Saskatchewan. June 18th, talking to Young Prince Beats. He's a local producer here in Lethbridge who uh, I think has roots out in London, Ontario, I think he told me. Uh, June 22nd, I'm talking to King Juss. I got a chance to meet him when he was out here with Fresh Kills. Uh, so we just briefly slapped hands and that was about it at, at the show that they played. But uh, looking forward to talking to him. June 22nd, uh, June 25th, I'm talking to Imperative. He's a Toronto-based producer. And then June 29th, I'm finishing off the first half of the year worth of interviews. I think I'll have done like 30 of them or so since January. It's, it's been every week, every Tuesday since January. And I mean, December and November before that too. But uh yeah, we're, we're plugging along pretty good here uh, into season three of Fly in Formation. But June 29th, we're finishing out. I'm talking to Alchemy the Linguist and Donnie Sage, two hometown heroes. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting to chop it up with them. Thanks again for coming through, everybody. And um, yeah, as always, make sure you check out After the Smoke is Clear, where I play music by all these artists every week with DJ Dice on the mixes. Um, we put a lot of work in trying to bring the entire culture together and putting it on a platter in front of people because there's so much music that comes out that, you know, it's a lot to keep up with for people who are trying to live lives outside of the hip hop world. But these are all independent artists who deserve and need a little bit of support. So uh, it's it's the least I can do to try to get as much new music into New Year's every week as we can. Check it out, mixcloud.com slash dubious. Get yourself the Mixcloud app if you don't already have it. That's the only place that you can hear these interviews in audio-only form. And uh, I appreciate everybody who hits the like button over there. That helps get it in front of more people and, you know, push it up the Mixcloud charts and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, everybody have a good night. Peace.